welcome back to 10 Count. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Michael Bach of UCN Live and the editor-in-chief of RingTV.com, Doug Fisher. This Friday night from Tucson, Arizona, it's top rank on ESPN, and we have WBO Championship fights headlined by the featherweight tussle between Oscar Valdez, undefeated at 22-0, taking on Genesis Cervenia, who has a record of 29-0. And the co-feature, Zerdo Ramirez defends his WBO 168-pound title against Jesse Hart. I think these are two pretty solid fights. Could be entertaining. Uh, Mike, I've seen a little bit of Cervania. And based on his style, he's your classic, hungry, passionate, ambitious Filipino fighter against Oscar Valdez, who never runs away from a fight. I, I think this will have some fireworks. I think so as well, because uh, if he presents the same type of fight Miguel Mariaga presented to Oscar Valdez a couple of months ago, we're in for a very good treat. Um, I, would, I favor Valdez in this fight, obviously, I think you will as yeah. well. Uh, I really love his left hook. It's a, it's a punch that has really been the exclamation point to every single fight, his past, past like five or six fights. Uh, I think five of six have been knockouts by that left hook. And I keep reminding him, every time I see him, I'm like, you got to name that left hook or something, or at least remember <laughs> me when I mention it to you every time I talk to you. But uh, yeah, I, I do like this fight. I, I hope Cervania's game. I, I don't know too much about him. I've, I've only seen he's a couple of fights. guaranteed to be game. Yeah? He's hungry. Okay, yeah. well, he's and undefeated he's, and hungry, exactly. And he's, a, he's, he's young. I think he's just 25, 24, 25, but he's experienced. Mm -hmm. He's battle-tested. He's been in some hard fights. And, and, and he's gonna, I, I think it's going to be a, an action-packed fight. You brought up Miguel Mariaga. He is like Miguel Mariaga, but not as technically sound. So that creates opportunities for Oscar Valdez. So we yeah. can see some knockdowns, some real crazy back-and-forth slugfest stuff. The one thing I worry about Valdez, and, and you've seen him at the gym, we all have. Yeah. His sparring sessions you could literally pay for. Yes. Because yes. he he's not holding back. He's not pulling punches. And I do worry about the physical erosion. Also, I was there for the Mariaga fight. I don't care what the scorecard said. That was a tough Close fight, fight, Doug. Yes, it was. Close. I, I thought it was it was in the balance until he dropped him the tenth, in, in yeah. the 10th round. I think that, that left hook. That, that's what separated him from Mariaga. I really do. I think that turned the fight. Where do you see Valdez in the featherweight class? I think this is one of the strongest divisions yes. in terms of upper tier contenders and belt holders. Leo Santa Cruz, yeah. Abner Mares, uh, I guess Carl Frampton is kind of sort of not there anymore. Yeah. Gary Russell's obviously very talented. Yeah, I don't, I don't think no. he's on their level. I, I would rank all of those guys ahead of him. Okay, but based he's on player. talent or re resume? Based on experience. Okay, so that's more resume. Based on experience, okay. yeah, based on, on resume. I think he is talented. Um, he, does he have Gary Russell Jr.'s speed and reflexes? No. No, no, he doesn't. Um, does he have the size and reach of a, of a Leo Santa Cruz or, or that kind of um, volume punching, yeah. you know, work ethic? Um, no, but he's very strong. You brought up his hard sparring. Everything he does in the gym is hard. Yeah. Because he likes it. Yeah. He likes to train. He has great Fight. passion. He, he does have a lot great of passion. He has a lot of sport. passion for the sport, the sport, for learning his craft, for his own conditioning. Guys like that are, are typically overachievers. So I think he's going to get more out of his ability. He's going to get the most out of his experience. And he's gaining experience now. And I think he's a player because his promoter, Top Rank, they know how to build guys. Not just develop them as fighters, but build them into attractions. Now, he's from Mexico. He was a two-time Mexican yeah. Olympian. But he spent a lot of time in the United States, in Tucson, Arizona. That's why he speaks perfect yeah. English. Yeah. That helps his marketability. But the great thing about Top Rank is... They keep taking him back to Tucson. Yeah. They're going to build him up there. Yeah. So he's going to build up a pretty dedicated following over the next year or two in Arizona and in Southern California. And that's going to add to his viability as a featherweight player. So if you're like a, a, a standout featherweight, you're going to need Oscar Valdez to make for a huge fight. Doug, on the way up here, I, I called Bob Arum. He's in Tucson promoting that event this Friday night. And I asked him down the line, if you should win this fight Friday, can you get Gary Russell? Can you get... Abner Morris, can you get Leo Santa Cruz? And he says, Gary Russell has a mandatory. But Bob said two things that were interesting. He said, when Morris and Santa Cruz rematch eventually, that'll work itself out. That does seem to make sense. But he also mentioned Carl Frampton. Frampton just recently signed with Matthew Macklin. Right. Who has Michael Conlon, who's with top rank. That's a good fight. It's an excellent fight. 
that's a fight that I think you have to make on the ESPN level. Because this is listen, I think it's a fun fight, but it is a bit of a showcase. We have to be honest about it, and that's going to be the whole key of the ESPN deal. It's one thing to show some of the big names, guys. But Michael, we need fights. We need good, old-fashioned, athletic competition. Absolutely. Horn Pacquiao was a bit surprising. I don't think we expected it to be that competitive. But that's been, I think, their best uh, main event so far on ESPN. Crawford wiped out Ndongo pretty quickly. And this one, you know, uh, I think Valdez is that fighter that can find himself in good fights, though, mm -hmm. consistently. Um, he has that style to do, to do it. And I'm glad he is getting back in Tucson because... The past four fights, he was on pay-per-view and pay-per-view undercards. Yeah. So I'm glad he's getting this exposure. I think he's a highly marketable guy. And, uh, you know, the, the co-feature isn't bad either. Well, here's my question. And I like Gilberto Ramirez, solid all-around <laughs> technician. But should we just pencil in 12-round decision? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I, hope not I hope Jesse Hart can make a little bit of a better fight than that. I favor Ramirez. I favor. I just sure. think he's the better boxer, the better technician in there. And he boxes in a manner uh, that suits... His attributes. He's tall and rangy. He's a southpaw, yeah. right? Sticks behind that southpaw but he's jab. But methodical to a point of yeah. being monotonous. Oh, yeah, though. no. That's I mean, the issue. You, yes. get, you, you get tired of watching him after three rounds. That's the case <laughs> with most, like, quote-unquote, pure boxers. Yeah. I think Jesse Hart, being a Philly fighter, um, being a pretty good athlete, having some decent power, um, I think you combine those two, maybe he can make something happen. I, I, I am uh, curious about this fight. I don't think it's going to be as good as uh, Valdez, Cervania, but I, I, I do think that it, it's going to be more compelling than most Gilberto uh, Ramirez fights. The one thing that worries me about Jesse Hart, the Deshaun Johnson fight, who's not a big puncher, but I remember Adam watching out. that fight, I think, at the 2300 Arena In online, Philadelphia, yeah. and he decked him late, and it was a hard knockdown. Guys, overall, early thoughts on the top-ranked ESPN relationship. I think it's been good. I don't really, I'm not a big fan of how they package each fight. Um, for just a small example, and this may be maybe not even a big deal, but uh, all of their cards look the same aesthetically. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I feel like they just need to mix it up and be more creative about it. But other than that, I mean, we're, we're getting, we are getting the showcases you guys mentioned. Um, I, I do, I think it's going to be a good relationship because they're in for the long term, ESPN is. Yeah. And I think that helps. Yeah, I think it's promising. I'll put it that way. Got to make fights, though. You got to make fights. Yeah, so we true. don't know and until, you know, and it, once Top Rank kind of runs out of sort of the in-house opponents for their star fighters, um, then we'll really see how promising yeah. it can be. We'll see if he can, um, you know, co-promote yeah. fights. It, reach across the aisle, yeah. as I like to say. And, and, and when I say reach across the aisle, I mean Golden Boy Promotions. I mean Al Heyman. Yeah, I mean, that's the big one. Yeah. Because Al Heyman, all his stuff is going to one network, Showtime, which, by the way, very strong schedule. Yeah. Kudos to them. I, well, the thing that I do like the most, some of the more periphery issues, is the wraparound coverage on SportsCenter, on First Take, the graphics they use, the highlights they show on other shows. That's been lost with boxing for at least 20 to 25 yes. years. And this past weekend, Doug, when we're doing our stuff for Ring TV, if you're watching ESPN throughout the week, they are covering boxing like a real sport. Yeah, right. And I think that is part of keeping the lights on, as Todd DeBuff said. So that's it this Friday night from Tucson, Arizona. For on behalf of Steve Kim, Doug Fisher, and Mike Baca, till the next 10 count, goodbye, everybody.